Crucifixion was not the method of uh, capital punishment during this day and age. But nevertheless, the prophet here writes that his hands and his feet would be pierced. And it's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Psalm 34, verse 20, it says that Jesus' bones would not be broken. The coming Messiah would not have a single bone broken. Yet, within the capital punishment of crucifixion, it was common for one who was crucified to have their legs broken to speed up the process. The, the process of death, that is. Jesus' legs were not broken, thus he fulfilled Psalm 34, verse 20. So we see that there is prophecy about Christ, and that prophecy is fulfilled. We also see in 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 3, prophecies pertaining to the apostasy of the church. Paul, the apostle, foretold that in the latter times, men would give in to these doctrines of demons, that they would follow these doctrines of demons, false doctrines, if you will, which came a reality later on, hundreds of years later, when the Catholic Church decided that uh, priests could not marry, when they decided that uh, they could not uh, eat meats on certain days, that's a direct fulfillment of this prophecy made by the Apostle Paul, thus proving the inspiration of the Bible, the validity of the claim that the Bible is infallible and that there is foreknowledge and uh, historical foreknowledge, that is. We consider the scientific foreknowledge of the Bible that all of the continents were connected in a common landmass and the oceans are gathered into a common bed. The continents, those three continents on which uh, they dwelt. You notice that Israel is right in the middle? Well, it's said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, the continents were together. How could no Moses, the writer here, have known that? They didn't have satellites. They didn't have uh, airplanes or anything like that. They couldn't see from a distance. How could the psalmist, David, in Psalm chapter 8, verse 8, know that there were currents within the seas. Psalm 8.8 was written thousands of years before man ever entered into space. How would they know that? Or before, uh, for example, man traveled all over the before Columbus, before Magellan, before these explorers. How would Isaiah know? In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, thousands of years before men entered into space, before they could see uh, a round earth before they could determine that the earth was round and it wasn't flat. But he says that the earth is round. This is proof. All the other books, uh, his historical and all the other uh, religious literature like the Quran, the Vedas, and so on and so forth, all of these documents teach that the earth is flat. The Quran says it quite explicitly. The earth, the earth is round according to the Bible. In Job 26 and verse 7, the earth is suspended in space. It's not leaning on anything. How would they know that back then? Proof that the Bible was inspired by God. How would Job know, Job 38 and verse 16, that there are springs in the bottom of the ocean? They didn't have submarines back then. They didn't have any way of knowing that there were springs underneath the water. That's proof that the Word of God is inspired. The specifications of Noah's Ark, for example, that it's perfect. The perfect amount of space was used to make sure that that ark was buoyant. How would Noah have known that? And that design has been copied for thousands of years. The design of Noah's Ark, because that was a perfect design. That design was given by God. Thus we know that the God of the Bible does exist. Medical reasons for the infallibility of the scriptures. We consider the book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 45. Individuals with leprosy were told to keep away because God taught the, the Israelites that leprosy was something to stay away from. How would they have known about germs? How would they have known about diseases that spread with human contact? 
They didn't know about that kind of thing until at least the 18th century. A.D., not B.C. This proves that the God of the Bible does exist and His Word is true. They were told to keep away from dead bodies. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 12. Abraham was told to circumcise everyone in his household on the eighth day. The child was to be circumcised on the eighth day. Why? We know now that the vitamin K in a child's body is the highest on the eighth day. Uh, an infant, uh, infant's wounds will coagulate easier and they will heal quicker and thus there will be less of a chance of death. This is proof that the God of the Bible knows what he's talking about. And so we have these different existence, uh, different evidences for the existence of God, and I have some more to talk about pertaining to the prophecies uh, uh, the, to, to prove the inspiration and foreknowledge of the scripture, specifically historical. But uh, that's enough for now. I'd like us to consider these things and continue to think about them uh, and also be attentive as we listen to Mr. Smalley's counterarguments to uh, the existence of God. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I want to say thanks to uh, Seagull Church of Christ uh, for hosting this today and uh, to Mr. Bill Burke for moderating and my opponent, Michael Duncan. I know you all have uh, a lot of choices on what you can do with your Saturdays, and we appreciate you sharing them with, with us. I know uh, Sunday's pretty much spoken for you, but I appreciate you making the decision to be with us here on Saturday. Um, you may have noticed in the front we've got uh, some materials on atheism. It's not really to deconvert you. Uh, it's just to educate you more so on what atheism is really about. And um, I think that there is a lot of misunderstanding about atheism, and, and a lot of that is, is at the fault of the atheist. Um, if you look at the what I like to call the YouTube atheist, a lot of them get you know just vulgar and nasty, and, and uh, you know I, I'm constantly telling them to dial that back. I mean, you're never going to be taken seriously, you know, until you can be respectful. So. I hope everyone keeps that in mind. And um, you may be surprised to know that atheists, especially me, we're, we're not interested in seeing Christianity wiped out. That's not the goal at all. As a matter of fact, if the president said today Christianity was illegal to be practiced in the United States, I would be the first one out there in the picket line with you to protect your constitutional right. And I think that a lot of people think that Atheism means that we're anti-Christian. That's not what it means at all. Atheism means without God. So theism is with God. And atheism, the A in atheism is an anti, or anti-Christ at all. It means without God. I do not have a God I worship. 